Welcome back to Tipton Bros. Today, we will be discussing what I believe is the best sniper rifle of the Second World War. Of course, this is subjective and purely my opinion. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And before we begin, a like is greatly appreciated. Let's get into it. One may assume that the best sniper rifle of World War II would be one of the classics. Maybe a 1903A4, or possibly an exceptionally accurate K98 fitted with the ZF-39 scope. While these are fantastic options that are often portrayed in cinema, there is one rifle that has gone unnoticed. A rifle that slinks in the shadows of the Pacific Theater, striking fear into the hearts of encroaching U.S. forces. Elusive, accurate, and efficient, the Type 97 is the best sniper rifle of World War II. Entering service in 1937, the Type 97 was a direct response to the casualties Japan incurred at the hands of German-trained Chinese snipers amid the Second Sino-Japanese War. Produced at the Nagoya and Kokora Arsenal until 1943, roughly 22,500 rifles would be produced, with the Nagoya Arsenal shouldering most of the production. Using the platform of a Type 38 Arasaka, the Type 97 was equipped with a few minor upgrades, those being a 2.5 power telescopic scope, a slightly lightened stock, and a mid-band capable of retaining a monopod, although later models would forego this feature in order to conserve materials. Additionally, the scope of the Type 97 was offset to the left to allow for unhindered feeding of stripper clips. Now none of this is all that impressive, and that's the point I'm trying to convey. The beauty and precision of the Type 97 is in its simplicity. At its core, the Type 97 is merely a refined Type 38 fitted with an optic, and that would be its greatest strength. The platform of the Type 38 is optimal for a marksman's role. Chambered in 65 by 50 mm Arasaka, this round was flat shooting with little recoil, but what made it perfect was its insignificant muzzle report. When fired from the Type 97, the 65 by 50 mm round produced very little muzzle flash, which allowed for a Japanese sniper to remain concealed and inconspicuous to an approaching adversary. Japanese snipers would scout out positions prior to an attack and lay in wait, being well masked by their surroundings. U.S. forces would be slowly worn down by a single man and his rifle. Being unable to locate the target, this greatly lowered morale. Japanese snipers were considered high-value targets, and hunted mercilessly. When captured, which was quite rare, their fate was sealed. U.S. soldiers held great malice in their hearts for the Japanese sniper, as they would often target medics. In the end, Japan would lose the war, but the Type 97 remained a thorn in the side of the U.S. throughout the conflict, and a looming thought in the back of every soldier's mind, praying that the sniper's bullet does not find me this day. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Again, if you disagree with anything I've said, or have a question, please feel free to drop it down in the comments. I am no expert, and never claim to be. More videos will be coming out soon. Stay tuned. Until next time, on Tipton Bros.